Hello, my name is Julian. Um, I want to share a week ahead video with you. So starting today, May 20th, and going all the way to, um, we'll go to Saturday, the 26th of May. So um, I'm just going to start day by day um, instead of doing a larger week overview. Um, and that's because I don't, I, I've been doing weekly astrology for a few years now. Um, and I find that to try to synthesize a whole week as a whole thing, like as one chapter, rarely gives credit to the nuances that come up each day, as well as that, um, follow from one week to the next. Um, so I'm gonna, just going to focus on day by day here. So here's May 20th. Um, the, the most powerful thing happening right now is that we have the moon in the sign of Libra and the moon is the body in the sky that moves the fastest. It's, you know, when when we're in any moment in the day checking where the moon is, um, will often be the most direct reflection um, of what's kind of going on for each of us at any moment. Um, I would say, especially when, when you're having like a difficult moment, um, understanding like the moon's transits to planets can be a very empowering um, reflection as to why whatever's coming up is coming up in a moment. So when you look at the moon, um, throughout the week, it'll spend two and a half days in a sign. And so over those two and a half days, there'll be kind of that flavor of whatever the sign is and whatever planets are aspecting that sign. Um, so in the case of today and, and yesterday, the moon has been in Libra. And so we've been really in this question of relationships, the question of self and other, and, um, it might just be like that these topics have been coming up in your day-to-day -day life or it's in your own internal monologue has been your your emotional inner world has been really drawing you to considering significant relationships in your life or maybe beauty or you know changing your hair color or just really styling yourself libra is all about um seeing yourself in, in, in other people. And so therefore it's it's kind of about making sure you're perceived um, in the way that you want to be perceived. Um, and so for some people that reflects in their choice of clothes um, or makeup or whatever, or, and for others, that's not really a consideration. It really depends. Um, but anyway, that's with Libra alone, but the, the south node of the moon is in Libra right now. And that's a very much longer term transit. So the moon is going to leave Libra tomorrow on the 21st, but the south node of the moon will be there all throughout the rest of this year. And what is the south node of the moon? South node of the moon is where we are simultaneously resurrecting and letting go. Um, and so it's odd to think of these two things happening at the same time, um, but it's kind of like nothing can ever be created or destroyed. Um, it just exists. And so when we let go of one, let's say pattern of behavior, we, we bring upon ourselves a different pattern of behavior. So it's not like usually you can quit something and then not have a replacement for it. Um, you know, if you quit cigarettes, maybe you just really eat a lot more sugar afterward. Like there's, and it's not to say there's no way out of addiction in that way. And this is not necessarily about that. Although actually it, it, it kind of really is. It's about the the patterns and the ways of being that we are so used to um some of them are gifts 
and that's why they come so naturally to us. And some of them are not. They are not. They are patterns that we are actually actively playing out in order to extinguish them. And in reality, everything is just that. We are playing life out in order to extinguish our desire. Um, or at least that's one cosmology. Um, so when <laughs> the moon is in Libra, when the South Node is also here, um, as the South Node has been here for well over six months now, you know, almost almost a year actually. And so for this whole chunk of time, this whole year, into the rest of this year, when it comes to our significant relationships, how we how we are navigating our day-to-day -day life and toggling how we are perceived by others, whether that's through um, the people we choose to relate to um, intimately or otherwise, or if it is how we are dressing, or if it is all of that, um, there are patterns that we are both letting go of and resurrecting. And when I say resurrecting, it's like, when it comes to who each of us is as a soul, um, we know <laughs> on a very, very deep level, we know what authenticity feels like, which is to say we know who we are, but that's not always present, right? We're not always connected to that authenticity of self. And so it sometimes feels like there's parts of ourself that has to die before we can become something else, before we can access the deeper, perhaps more true expression of self in whatever phase of life. Um, which doesn't mean the pattern that is being let go of was necessarily bad. There was likely purpose to that pattern of relationship or otherwise. Anywhere the South Node is, it's a very, very powerful, very deep, dear, very deep placement. And so that's why it can feel very difficult to let go of patterns. But when you think about it in such a way where when you let go of one pattern, you allow a different one to resurrect. And as long as you're letting yourself actually play out the new pattern, um, instead of trying to extinguish the pattern entirely, um, then there's less repression because South Node is also where we are repressing these patterns or we're repressing these behaviors, these learned behaviors, because we know that they are bad or because they are not um, present time. Um, and that's fine to do that. Like repression is totally fine. Like there's nothing morally wrong with it, but it doesn't feel very good um, physically and physiologically. Um, more people than ever right now that I am close to experience physical symptoms from stress and from pain or, or from psychological or emotional stress. Um, so, okay, that's the moon in Libra and crossing the South Node. I mean, the start to this week is really digging up this relationship cycle that is being so deeply cleansed and pruned really um it starts already begin it's going to continue into the next year but you know every once every month the moon will pass the south node and it will pass the south node in libra until the end of this year so we have how many more months may june july august september october november december we have like eight more times where the moon is going to pass over the south node so it's in libra specifically so it's not to say that whatever you're dealing with right now has to be resolved today or tomorrow no um we have like eight cycles of cycles more of this to work with and then you know it it, it 
it, the energies just morph into each other. It's not, it's not to say that after next year, we're not going to be dealing with relationship patterns and issues, not at all, but it's just like, this is what's up collectively right now in such a huge way. So many relationships are ending or are having to be transformed so dramatically and in such surprising ways that it's not always just as clear as like break up or get together. It's like, no, things might appear very similar, but the internal world around the significance or the purpose or the role of these relationships is changing the the role of relationships in the world is also being transformed like relationship status quo um so this this is really the signature this week that has my most attention or rather um on this day may 20th and um so yeah um whenever the moon is in libra you well wherever anything is it will have a ruling planet and so you can take a look at where that ruling planet is so right now venus is the ruler well venus is always the ruler of the planet of the sign libra but right now venus um is in the sign of taurus and it just made a conjunction to this planet called uranus which is very um electrifying it doesn't always like often people will call this like sudden change and sudden inspiration or you know a, a insight or blah 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 and yeah it's it's wonderful but not everyone is going to like <laughs> have a earth earth shattering love experience you know um maybe but what this really says to me because it's in the sign of taurus taurus is all about the inner world our values it's like we are kind of in this moment where our values and how we love ourselves really um, is becoming radicalized. Um, this is like, it's kind of saying like, fuck it kind of energy. Like I am worth it. Like I'm so worth it. And I just, I have that deep knowing that I am. Um, and yet there can still be some unstable ground and insecurity around that because Uranus is, is that it's unstable. You, you don't know, there's no linear logic to Uranus. It's timeless. Um, Uranus is very much so like the algorithm, you know, the, the matrix, like the, the, the mind of God, the synchronicities and these things. So um, at the same, the same time, Jupiter and the sun were conjunct yesterday and now Venus is moving towards Jupiter and the sun in the next few weeks. And so this whole kind of radicalized self value that is so present moment, again, it's not like a long-term linear understanding because we're, 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 there's such a focus right now in the present moment. And there's, a, there's another signature as to, uh, I'll, I'll speak about that, but like, um, when, when Jupiter comes to meet, or when Venus comes to meet Jupiter later in the week, whatever this electrifying, like, it's almost like frenetic energy of like re recognizing that each of us has to really value ourselves so profoundly and really love ourselves and give ourselves what we need and what we want. Um, not through relationship though, which is so ironic because our relationship very much so, as I spoke about with Libra, is the ground, is the reflection through which we are seeing these nuances of self that we're trying to change patterns and change behaviors. But um, with the ruler here, Venus with Uranus and with Jupiter and the sun, Taurus is just about yourself. They're both Venus world signs, Taurus and Libra, but Libra is about the other person. Venus is, uh, Libra is like the social element of Venus. Taurus is the internal element of Venus. So, you know, we are valuing our, our relationship to ourself, really, um, 
but it's easy to get tripped up and think that we need to make some big change in an external relationship when in reality we are just being totally like electrically <laughs> shifted right now um, if we allow ourselves to kind of really sink into that um, and you know wherever the south node is the north node is right across the street 180 degrees and that is also there was just a conjunction actually it's happening right now because i use the the mean the, the true node which is 1456 so today mar on the 20th mars will conjunct the north node exactly um mars is the ruler of the north node in aries right now and aries is the opposite of libra which is um incarnation itself it's the breath it is impulse it is the match it is like the the lighter the lighter <laughs> um it can start the fire it's not it's not the whole you know it's not the food that is cooked on the fire that's that's taurus it's the fire itself and so with the north node and the north node ruler right now in aries we are our own pilot light right now and that is our that 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 has so much of our focus in our active world um and later this week mars will meet chiron in the sky and chiron has been close to the north node this whole time for months now and so there's been an impulse to heal our stories around our wounding to up level to let go of old narratives around chronic pain chronic emotional pain as well as chronic physical pain that somehow reinforce a core wounding in each of us that we aren't allowed to exist that um you know and maybe that is traced back to judeo-christian mentality ideology that we are sinful um or maybe it is just as simple as this idea that we are separate from the creator from all that is from the universe whatever you want or we are separate from our beloved um and that separation separation makes us inherently unworthy of actually even just being in a body like that one is we've been working with this for a while now but the the what i'm very tuned into specifically is not actually about retelling old mythology of of these things within astrology it is saying we are connected right now to these patterns and we are telling ourselves the story we are cementing brain plasticity to say what all of this means which reinforces how we feel and opening up ourselves to be a pilot light for new expression of patterns in the world instead of retelling the same stories over and over and over again and so there's like there's actually like a break that's happening with you know not not just relationships but with a self a self that we have been the story we've been telling ourselves how we've been logically making sense of all of the emotional or physical pain that we've been in our life circumstance anything that's confusing um you know the last five years for most people that I know has been not just challenging, but a wake up. Like everyone's like, oh shit, like I'm actually in charge. <laughs> like I'm actually conscious and I make conscious decisions and it's actually not, like it's 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 actually up to me. Um, so yeah, I, I think, Mars this week, Mars with Chiron is going to be so much, it already is, this is already very felt. It is like a knife um, in, in, and it's like, like just what do you do with that raw impulse, that, that pilot light? Um, so, okay, let's keep going. I think that that served as a good, you know, kind of introduction to this week. Um, by tomorrow on the 21st, the sun will have moved in Gemini, which is very fun. Um, Gemini season is kind of like the start of summer in many parts of the world, in the whole world, really, if you're on a working calendar or a school calendar for most places, not, not all places, but anyway, um, Gemini season is a lot less embodied. It's a much more of the mind, 
um, and it'll be ruled by this Mercury and Taurus, however, so we'll still be talking about um, really all of the embodiment that we've brought ourselves into over the last month. But um, yeah, Gemini season is always just a little bit more light, a little bit more conversational, a little bit less in in the, the in the ground, if if you will. Um, but we'll see here, the moon will have moved into Scorpio, which is the opposite of Taurus. So interestingly, I think we'll be able to be delving somewhat deeply. Scorpio is all about evolution. So when the moon is in Scorpio, we're necessarily going to be confronted with emotional situations that bring us to the depths of where we need to go in that moment. Um, and so often with Scorpio opposing Taurus, um, we go into questions of self value and these challenging psychological or spiritual worlds that separate us from earthly reality or our value in earthly reality or even the necessary existence of it. Because in Scorpio, um, we face our psychological edges um, and we can also look behind the veil this is the sign and the energy and the archetype that allows us to do things like astrology and um, any type of divination. Um, and ironically, that practice can be seen as a separating desire. Um, and so, yeah, from the 21st into the 22nd, it'll be like a, a very, very deep dive, actually, I think. Um, into really the psychological edge of where we need to be. Um, so I'm I'm actually looking forward to that because I think that the moon and Libra transit brought up a lot of social situations and impulses and questions that really wanted action to be taken, but I don't know if the South Node being there really gave a lot of oomph for action to be taken, whereas Scorpio moon is much more, I would say, strategic in wielding a circumstance to meet a need um, instead of being so socially attuned, like Libra is a very socially attuned time. So we really can give people space with Libra Whereas Scorpio will dive in um, and really kind of do what it needs to do. Um, Moon will oppose Mercury there, which means that we are talking to somebody. <laughs> um, communication, specifically emotional communication about our values on, um, on Tuesday will be up. Tuesday's a really good day to, you know, set time to intentionally talk to someone or send a message you know, send a message even to the world about how you're transforming, whether that's to one person or to many people. Um, but there will be this new energy and the moon will be squaring Pluto also, which is unnecessarily, you know, it's a very, Pluto is the ruler of Scorpio on its own. And um, in Aquarius right now, Pluto is all about how... The definition of the human is changing as well as the our relationship to the like larger superstructures of um collective intelligence technology such and such but um ultimately it's totally transforming how we know anything at all um and how we identify it as humans because of the things we know or don't know um, and so when the moon, this is the last quarter square. So when the moon's making a last quarter square to Pluto tomorrow, um, this signature really says, hmm, we have to universalize our emotions. We are going to be pushed um, to make an emotional decision that we haven't made before. Um, no, no, no. Yes, that we haven't made before um, because we've been keeping our goal too small. This signature, the last quarter square, really asks us to begin to universalize our work and 
universalize the audience really for that, um, which doesn't say you have to go display your emotions to everyone, but rather like emotional expression, emotional catharsis that comes with this isn't because there is one specific person that can unlock it for you or because there is one situation or only one beloved or one this or that. It's like, no, this is the, this is the big letting go of like, I want God wants, I want what God wants for me, not what I want for myself. And love is actually transcendent and multi, you know, always available to everyone everywhere. Um, but this is a signature that is going to push you, <laughs> you know, until that actually embodying that emotion is reached. Um, and it's not like you have to meet that immediately or really ever, but that's, I think, the highest reflection or signature in that, which is just to say, this is a challenging day, but we will be talking about it with someone because Moon is opposing Mercury. Um, and as it is squaring Pluto in that last quarter square. So, um, Let's see, um, let's keep going. I think, yeah, Mars will have passed the North Node by that time too. So we'll be, that's called a new phase conjunction. Now all of these planets are in a new phase to these other planets. So Mars North Node is a new phase. Venus Uranus is a new phase. Jupiter Sun is a new phase, but um, Venus Jupiter is still in a balsamic phase. So you know, it's just like kind of a domino effect this week where we're really moving into new phases by closing out old phases. So I think this Scorpio moon will be helping us to really close out this Venus, Venus, Jupiter, as well as the sun. Anyway, but, um, okay. So what else? I think I'm just going to move on to the next day because there's a lot to talk about. So when I speak about this, like these, new phases it's just like this is why things always kind of bleed into each other like the past always informs the future um but these are just kind of signals and bookends um reference points and life situations that i'm sure are actually manifest in in actual reality based on where you physically are what you're doing new opportunities um, or really maybe old opportunities that are going away and there being a sense of openness. And there may be a lot of anxiety in that openness with these signatures, but I think what I'm saying when I say, like we all have to collectively start telling new stories about ourselves, not just like in astrological mythology, but it's like who you are is what you're saying about yourself. And if you're just saying the same story over and over again and expecting to have a new life, you're not going to get there. And I think everyone knows that now. Like I, I, I'm preaching to the choir, I think, but this is just kind of where rubber meets the road pretty dramatically. Um, so on Wednesday, I mean, really for this, this part of the, you know, week, this, the moon will still be in Scorpio. And so we're still kind of in that, I think all of Tuesday and Wednesday both are going to be kind of about deep diving into these specific relationships that will help us to like unlock and transform whatever's going on here and specifically likely around this um, Venus Jupiter conjunction which is about to happen later this week but you can see we can see the sun it also starts to trine Pluto on Wednesday, which is actually incredibly supportive. So like our sun is where we are creatively actualizing the present moment and like allowing ourselves to illuminate the truth through whatever action it is, whatever speech, it's just our full embodiment allows it to be to be present and to move. And when this is a opening trying to Pluto, which says there's gonna be opportunities <laughs> that come up to allow us to be in in our energy to do that, which is just, it's very nice. Um, can be intense opportunities, but very nice. So let's look at the next day. 
Yeah, so the moon will be still just right at the final degrees of Scorpio on Thursday. Um, the, the sun will be passing that trying to Pluto. And so again, with this, you know, emotionally resolving these big conversations, these big connections that we've had, moon will be opposing Uranus and Venus too. And so this movement, this Venus, Uranus, <laughs> Mercury, Jupiter, all still in in Taurus, the moon is going to be coming closer and closer to opposing all these planets, which is really going to say that the conjunction between Venus and Uranus that happened last week, we're really going to be able to kind of emotionally integrate it in a way when the conjunction itself happened a few days ago, these sudden insights around love and our self-worth might have just kind of appeared um, without any real resolution or grounding yet um, in our bodies, in our relationships, in our realities. Um, but there was likely a lot instigated in that. Okay, so on this day, Venus is also trying Neptune. I'm sorry, sextile. And this is an opening, this is a first quarter sextile, which is actually saying that we really know how to love. We know what 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 makes us feel loved. We know how to love ourselves. We've done so much work on that. And this signature, a first quarter trine, sorry, first quarter sextile, really says that we know what we need to do. And that actually says more about going inwards to chart the path first before setting out on the path. So going inwards to sit and reflect and churn like a little bit more actually on the actual roadmap moving forward. Like, but this is the type of roadmap that roadmap that might come very um intuitively, imaginatively. And this could be like in conversation with someone. This could be with a partner or with, you know, but it's like, this is like, oh yeah, like let's like let's really seclude ourselves for a minute so that we can get even clearer on what we already know. Um, but there's just a tremendous amount of receptivity and gentleness and transcendence really, which I think is going to be well received because I think that this moon and Scorpio transit will be very intense. And so the Venus Neptune will be very helpful to softening um, creatively, emotionally, spiritually resolving and and allowing that resolution to take, you know, its next step moving forward. That's how I see this. Um, so I really like Thursday actually for that. Um, what else? I'll mention for Thursday, then Friday, moon is in Sagittarius, and we have our full moon, actually, which is very fun. I think this is a very nice full moon. Let's get to the moment of the full moon here. Um, so full moons are all about, like, relationships. <laughs> because it's the sun is opposite the moon. And so when two any two planets are ever opposite each other, there is a relationship. It's the Aries Libra axis polarity. So um, here we have the sun in Gemini, which is all about how we are mentally making sense of our lives um, and kind of playfully enjoying that understanding. And then Sagittarius moon, which is all about exploration and the higher meaning that comes from the data of the exploration that we're doing. Um, so it's like with all the work that we did, the um, this full moon is actually really incredible because it says like, actually we're emotionally resolving all the intensity through meaning right now. And what's the meaning is Jupiter at the very last degree of Taurus, which says we've worked so much to let ourselves expand our self-worth um, to expand, it could be our finances or our 
um, you know, our self-love, but it's ultimately like we have expanded so much in our allowing ourselves to survive and thrive over the last year. And that has come through a lot of sudden, that was that Jupiter Uranus conjunction. This, this process of allowing ourselves to love ourselves has not been straightforward. It's been incredibly nonlinear. It's been incredibly cyclic, incredibly electric and uncomfortable at times. Um, but at that 29th degree with this full moon, these are both culminative signatures the 29th degree and a full moon, which is, and then, you know, Venus is going to be right there at the 29th degree with Jupiter at this full moon, which is actually incredible. Um, and so actually the full moon is happening on Thursday. Now that I see it, this is GMT. Um, so wherever you are in the world for that, but um, yeah, this looks like actually such a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful full moon. You know, there aren't any crazy squares happening. Um, Mars is going to be pretty close to Chiron, but not exactly. But all that's saying is like, we are just taking action to heal ourselves, like through being ourselves. Um, and this is also trying Pluto still, which says there are opportunities to transform at a soul level. I mean, this is amazing. This full moon is really cool. I really am really looking forward to this full moon. Um, what else? Yeah, the, um, you know, Venus still rules that Jupiter, which is the ruler of the full moon. And I think this is, this full moon is going to be felt as intensely culminative there's going to be a feeling of real finishing being done here. Um, you know, that's that's really truly what I think. And it's also in that first quarter sextile to Neptune too, which says, you know, this will be a great night to like have fun. Like it's a big boisterous full moon, but there might be something a little bit more quiet that comes up about this full moon that doesn't need to be overly made public or um, it really asks to go, as I said, inward to consider the spiritual like content that we can just receive when we, when we go inward. That first quarter sextile, I'm just saying that is all about focusing. <laughs> it's all about choosing the option that you know is right in front of you and making a plan to do it really, really well. It's a very subtle energy that can be missed out on. But I think that's a just a good thing to pay attention to. Like, where are you being called to move inwards and receive something more spiritually? And this is going to be something really big and abundant, actually because of this Jupiter is right there. Um, it could just be this very powerful sense of self and connection and like capacity to give yourself what you need without there being as much inner resistance or self-hatred or confusion about it. Um, so I'm really, really, really looking forward to this, but I will say this is on the heels of that moon and Scorpio transit, which is, a lot but I think that is to say like allow the depth like let lead yourself into the depths this time if you feel called towards resolution especially in relationships at this time it's a powerful time to make an effort um if you if, if the effort is coming through you and despite or rather because of vulnerability or pain, you, you recognize that you need to hold yourself really compassionately while simultaneously putting yourself in a vulnerable position. It's not easy. And not every 
single relationship that you feel this way about might need to be taken action upon. This could also just be a week where like letting go and just continually letting go of the storyline, letting go of the storyline. And because life will show you what storyline needs to be dealt with based on truly what is in front of you. Like there's so much energy this week in taking action for yourself, but it's a very, very fine line of what action can you take for yourself that actually doesn't depend on another person responding a certain way. So it's like, if you want resolution in a relationship, getting very clear about what you need, what you want or need to communicate to the other person, not in order to give them like this idea of power so that they they have the choice to resolve it for you or not, but rather just to say what you mean, to say where you are at, um, which allows there to be a relationship and allows there to be conversation, but doesn't doesn't unnaturally it's it's not about expectation or there being wrong expectation but it's just this question of what is authentic like we can't not be in our bodies we can't not be who we are we can't be somebody else yet it's very easy to think that in relationships Okay, I'm going to keep going. Um, but I'm just, I'm very excited for this full moon. I think there's a really profound culminative energy, but I think that this Scorpio moon transit, I'm, I'm, I really, you know, this is what I'm going to be telling myself. Life will, life already is exactly what you need. Like, it's just up to you to engage with the present moment as authentically as you can. And there's no effort involved here. This is just about allowing the impulse to move through you and not being attached to the outcome, but staying engaged in relationship. It's a very weird time because these things sound very contradictory, but it's like you can't be a self without relationship, but you can't be in a relationship without being an individual because yeah we've heard that a million times before but anyway let's let's get through this week um so on friday the venus will move into gemini which will be very exciting and very fun a little bit more lighthearted. um let's see what else um moon is going to try and all the airy stuff which is very exciting this trine is like um again more opportunities to burst forth in that like kind of pilot light energy i think after the full moon this is going to be really really lovely very invigorating it might bring up some like there's an impulse to do something that might feel painful but it is an opportunity and you don't have to take it but um just like follow follow your truth. Sagittarius is about your personal truth um, and following the path that you're making for yourself in that present moment. So this looks like a pretty fun end to the week. Um, uh, let's see, let's get to Saturday and then we're gonna end there. So yeah, Saturday, you know, the moon will stay in Sagittarius um, oh, that's not Saturday yet, but yeah, the moon will stay in Sagittarius into Saturday. Um, and Jupiter is really just edging right on the edge of Taurus and will go into Gemini next week, you know, and it is, that's going to be, we'll probably feel the vibe shift already this week because Venus and Sun are moving into Gemini and then Jupiter will just follow suit in a few days, but it's this really big shift. The shift this week is going to feel like a lightening because Taurus isn't bad 
but it's just, it can be very heavy. It's a fixed sign. It can be, there's this metaphor, the frog in the well, like you're very comfortable where you are um, and you are just comfortable with the patch of sky. You can see through the well, but you don't really look for more. Um, but when you get to Gemini, it's like, oh, I'm so curious. I want to follow. I want to know how many maps there are in the world. You know, I want to know as much as I can and explore. So, um, yeah, looks like a very, very exciting week. I'm personally still a little bit like the Scorpio moon transit that will happen at the beginning of the week will be tough. Um, but I think my biggest advice for myself is work with the new story, not the old story. Even if you don't know what language the new story is in, you don't know how to speak, try. <laughs> but remain faithful to the new story and let it move through you. Don't force anything. If it's not happening, it's just not happening. And until it's happening, it's not. And so it's not helpful to sit and rack your brain or force something. It's much more helpful to be doing something that is coming and that is coming and that is coming instead of the something that is like not. So <laughs> hope that makes sense. Um, let me know if this was fun or helpful. Um, hope you have a wonderful week. And um, yeah, bye for now. <laughs>